In this video, we'll introduce the idea of midpoint, which is an important one in the geometry curriculum and you're going to use a lot in here this year. You will need your graphing calculator for this video, so if you don't have it handy, go ahead and pause the video right now so that you can retrieve it. And remember, as you watch the video, if I say something that doesn't make sense or that you need further clarification on, pause, rewind, replay the video, or jot yourself a note in the margin so that you can remember to ask your question when you come back to class. All right, so first of all, what is a midpoint? A midpoint is a point that marks the exact center of a line segment. So as far as what it might look like in, pic in a picture, a line segment, remember, has two endpoints. So I'm going to let those red dots represent my two endpoints. And those two red points are the endpoints for that purple line segment. The midpoint would be the point that marks the exact center. So I would know that it would be the exact center because the two line segments that it creates are congruent to one another. And the way that we're going to show, show that they're congruent to one another in this class this year is to put a little hash mark on each piece. All right, so how can we find a midpoint if we know the endpoints of our line segment? Well, I'm going to go down here on this little graph and I'm going to say, let's just suppose we want to find the midpoint of that line segment that's determined by those two blue endpoints. Because this red line segment is perfectly horizontal and it's exactly 10 units long, and I know that because I can count them on the coordinate grid, I know that the midpoint of that line segment is going to be the point that divides that segment into two pieces, each of which are five units long. So again, if it's a horizontal line segment where I can count, or a vertical line segment where I can count, then it's fairly simple. So my first option is if the line segment is horizontal or vertical, count it. However, this is only going to work when the line segments are horizontal or vertical. So then the question we need to ask ourselves is, what happens if the, the line segment isn't horizontal or vertical? What happens if it's slanted? Well, in that case, we have a formula that we're going to use. And the formula says to find the midpoint of any two line segments, we can take and add the two x values of the endpoints together and divide by 2, and take the two y values and add them together and divide by 2. So officially, that is what the midpoint formula says. Now I'm thinking adding two things together and dividing by 2 is another name for simply finding the average. So I might also think about the midpoint as being the average of the two x-coordinates and the average of the two y-coordinates. These two formulas are two different ways of saying the exact same thing. I don't care which one you use. Either one is perfectly worthy. They're going to get you full credit if you choose to use it. What I would recommend is that you decide on the one that you think is going to work the best for you and then stick with that one and use that one every time. All right, so let's go ahead now and take a look at how we might use this to solve some problems. In this first example, it says find the coordinates of the midpoint for a segment with the given endpoints. Now, it's important here that we're trying to find the midpoint. When we're trying to find the midpoint, we're going to use the midpoint formula, always. If we're trying to find a midpoint, we will always use the midpoint formula, unless the segment is vertical or horizontal and we can count it. In this case, the line segment with those endpoints, A at 4, 2, and B at negative 2, 6, we can see pretty clearly from the picture that it is not a horizontal or vertical line segment, and therefore we're going to have to use the formula. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, every time I use a formula, write it down. 
So the midpoint here is either going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, or if you prefer, average the x values, average the y values. My two x values for the endpoints are 4 and negative 2. So my midpoint, or the x value of my midpoint here, is going to be 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2 for the new x coordinate. And the y values are 2 and 6. So 2 plus 6 divided by 2 for the y value. And if I want to, I can do this math mentally. If I'd rather, I can go ahead and dig out my calculator. Notice that each of these are fractions. So when I go to calculator, when I go to compute in my calculator, I'm going to enter them as fractions. So I'm going to hit control and then the divided by so that now I have a numerator of my fraction and a denominator. So the numerator says 4 plus negative 2 over 2. Notice that I enter that all as one fraction. Hit enter. It tells me the x value of my midpoint is 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing for the y part of the coordinate. So that was 2 plus 6 divided by 2. Enter the entire thing. The y part of my coordinate is 4. So the center point, or the exact middle of that line segment, is at the point whose coordinates are 1, 4, or at the point 1, 4. Which if I look at my graph is that green point right there, and it looks very reasonable uh, from the way it looks on the graph. Okay, letter B says find the midpoint of the line segment whose endpoints are at 1, negative 9.2, and at point B whose coordinates are negative 5, negative 4.7. Due to the fact that these are decimals, these two points would be significantly more difficult to graph in the picture. So this is where the midpoint formula is really, really, really useful. And again, I can either use the x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This time, just to be a little bit different, I'm going to say that's the same as taking the average of the x values and the average of the y values. But if you prefer the first formula, then by all means, I want you to keep using that formula. So remember that to average two numbers means add them together, divide by 2. So I'm going to do 1 plus negative 5 divided by 2 for the y part of the coordinate for my midpoint, or for the x, I'm sorry, and for the y part of my coordinate, negative 9.2 plus negative 4.7 divided by 2. And again, at this point, I'm going to definitely enter these into my graphing calculator. So for the x value, again, I'm going to go put the whole fraction in there. I've got the 1 plus the negative 5 divided by 2. And for the y value, I've got the negative 9.2 plus the negative 4.7 divided by 2. So we end up with negative 2 for the x part of my midpoint and negative 6.95 for the y value in my midpoint. If you didn't enter these into your calculator as I entered them in, you need to pause the video right now, take some time, go back, enter those into the calculator and make sure you know how your calculator's going to behave and treat those numbers. So the midpoint is the point whose coordinates are negative 2, negative 6.95. So notice, when I was trying to find the midpoint, I always use the midpoint formula. But in this next example, it's a little bit different. They give us a segment with one endpoint and a given midpoint. In this case, we're trying to find the coordinates of the other endpoint. So in this case, we know the midpoint. We're trying to find the endpoint. Because we already know the midpoint, we do not need the midpoint formula. We only use the midpoint formula when we're trying to find a midpoint. So our, our approach here is going to be a little bit different because what we're trying to find is a little bit different. In this case, I'm going to say, OK, let's go ahead and begin with one of the endpoints the endpoint whose coordinates are 6, 2. We know that the midpoint, the exact center point, 
has coordinates 2, 0. And we're trying to find the coordinates of the other endpoint, which I'm going to call B just for lack of something different. Well, if M is exactly in the middle, then it must be the change and I had in the x values, so going from 6 down to negative 2, or in other words, a net change of negative 4, must occur on the other side of this midpoint, or it won't be the center, it won't be the exact middle. So 2 subtract 4 is negative 2, and that's the x part or the x value for my other endpoint. So again, the whole idea with this is that we keep the change exactly the same. And if I take that same approach with the y values and going from 2 down to 0, I'm subtracting 2, and in order to keep this guy in the exact center, I need to have the exact same thing happening on the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract another 2, leaving my new endpoint negative 2. So the coordinates of my endpoint here are negative 2, negative 2. In the interest of time, I'm not going to verify this on the graph, but you could go ahead and graph those three points, and it, you would convince yourself that point M is indeed the midpoint of segment AB. I'm going to take the same exact approach for this second problem, but I'm going to work through it a little bit quickly, uh, quicker now because we've done one. So P, one endpoint, has coordinates 7, 3. The midpoint in the middle has coordinates 2, 1. And this time, maybe I'll call the other endpoint C. And all again, again, all I'm going to do is look at the net change. And going from 7 down to 2, it was a net change of minus 5. In order to keep M in the middle, I want to have exactly that same change on the other side of the midpoint. So that makes my new X value 3. And moving from 3 to 1, it was a change of negative 2. I want to have that exact same thing happen on the other side of my midpoint, making the coordinates of my new endpoint negative 3 negative 1. All right, if you have questions, please pause, rewind, rewatch the video, jot them down in the margin so that you can remember to ask about them when we come back to class. I do want you to take some time and in your own words summarize the key ideas from this video that you're going to need to be successful in dealing with questions on midpoint, and then see what you can or see if you can apply your newfound knowledge in order to solve the two questions on the next page. As always, thank you for the gift of your time in watching and paying attention to the video.